Okay, welcome back. This is lesson seven of Machine Learning Zoom Cup session two, and we will talk about training the machine learning model. So in the previous uh, lesson, we saw how to apply a model, and we know how to, when we have a feature matrix and we have the weights, how to make predictions. Now we need to answer the question, how do we actually come with weights? And we will do this now. So uh, remember that uh, for us, this g of x, uh, the function we have looks like that. So this is uh, uh, capital X, the feature times uh, the feature matrix times times the weights vector. So this is this is how it looks like. And what we want to do is we want this to be close to y, right? So ideally. Uh, we want this to be equal to y, right? but often it's not possible. Um, to find the closest solution to this, um, uh, like ideally, so we, we need to solve this uh, system. So this is a, a system, we need to solve it for w. So we need to find a way uh, to, uh, to find w, right? Let's say this x is invertible. So it means that the, there exists uh, x minus one matrix, x to the power of minus one, which is an inverse, and we need to multiply it from this hand, uh, this side as well. So x minus one. So in this case, if if this uh, inverse existed, then this cancels, it becomes i, and what we have is this. So this is how you would solve this uh, system if uh, inverse existed for x. However, as we talked uh, previously, this x is usually a rectangular matrix. Right? So it has a lot of rows and a few columns, perhaps. So this has uh, a dimensionality of uh, m times uh, n minus plus 1. Right? And it's not square, definitely not, not square. So for this matrix, the inverse doesn't exist. So we cannot just go ahead and uh, make an inverse. So for this system that we have, uh, that we have, the solution doesn't exist. We can try to find an approximate solution to this by multiplying this uh, by x transpose here. So this matrix is called the gram matrix. And for this matrix, transpose uh, for this matrix, the inverse exists usually um, because it's squared. So it's always uh, it's always squared. So I think it's uh, the dimension of this will be uh, n plus one times n plus one. Right. So for this one, uh, inverse should exist. It doesn't always exist, uh, but uh, we will talk about this a bit later. But uh, it's squared, so inverse can exist, and we can try to invert this matrix. So let's do that. Let's uh, move it a bit. So what we can do now is we can uh, multiply this by the inverse of this uh, gram matrix and multiply it here by the inverse of this gram matrix. So here, this is inverse of this one. It means that uh, this thing uh, goes away. It becomes uh, identity matrix, which means that uh, we are left with this part. So it's now, so the, we used to have uh, uh, i here and i times uh, w equals w. So this is, uh, this is gone. We can just remove it. Right. So this actually gives us a way to find uh, W. This W is not um, the solution to the system because the solution doesn't exist, but this W is the closest possible solution to that system. Uh, 
I'm not going to prove it now. So there are actually proofs uh, for that, uh, for this claim, and um, they involve a lot of uh, mathematics. And there is a good book about this called Elements of Statistical Learning. So you can refer to that book if you're really interested in uh, the derivation of, uh, of this, of how to derive this. Because what I showed you now is more like on the intuitive level, but uh, there is also a bit of theory behind that as well. That is uh, quite interesting if, if, you, if you like these kind of things and go check the book that I recommended for that. So now we have this formula. Let me show you uh, it one more time. Now we need to implement this. So let's call this train uh, linear regression. And the input to this is we need uh, we need the x, right, and we need the uh, y. So the input for this is x and y. I will not implement it right now. Let's just try to um, try to go through this uh, to understand what's going on here. So first we have this x. So we can use the same x. Um, so this x is a bit uh, problematic because it has more columns than rows. I think what we can do is maybe just come up with uh, more examples. So it's problematic because for this um, for this kind of matrix, the solution, the inverse will not necessarily exist, will probably not exist at all. So let's just come up with a matrix ourselves. So I'm doing that. I'm creating a list of lists. So the first column is, uh, yeah, let's remove the ones. We'll see how to add them. Um, and yeah, we need the commas. And I'll just copy this thing one more time. And one more time and change it, let's say, to five. Just have uh, like a bit of variation. I think this looks okay. I hope the inverse for this one will exist. Okay, so we have this matrix, right? And what we need to do next is uh, do, so let me just have it here so we know what we are implementing. So we have this gram matrix, the inverse of this, then we have uh, X transpose and then we have Y. And this is our uh, vector W. So we'll have it uh, here on our screen. So first, uh, let's uh, implement the the gram matrix. Let's calculate it. So that it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, of course it should be x. So we have the gram matrix. Let's call it a x t x, right? And then uh, we need to find its inverse. And we talked about this in the previous lesson, how to find the inverse of this matrix. And then it gives us some inverse. So we can call it uh, xtxinf, which is inverse. And we can quickly check that uh, they actually the dot product between them, the, uh, the multiplication between them gives us, uh, uh, yeah, it gives us an identity matrix. So we have ones. Uh, on the diagonal. So it's not exactly identity matrix, but there are these numbers, they are super tiny. So they are very small. They're just, uh, uh, yeah, we can safely ignore them. So we can treat this as zero. Okay. So the, this is the, the reason for that is like mach machine precision is not, uh, it's finite. So like it cannot do things with uh, infinite precision. And that's why, uh, yeah, the, there are some leftovers. Anyways, so we have this one, right? And uh, now we need to multiply it with uh, X transpose and then multiply it with Y. And we don't have a Y, of course. So let's uh, have a Y. It can be, I don't know. Uh, I'm just coming with this on the spot. So how many we have? I need more. So let me just duplicate this and I think we need one more. Uh, 
Okay, yeah. So this is our, actually, this is our uh, W. And we forgot about one thing. So we forgot about this bias term, right? So what we just did, what I just did, because I forgot to add um, uh, zeros, uh, like, sorry, ones here, that basically we trained the model, but we didn't train the bias term. Sometimes it's possible also to sometimes these models like that may make sense, but we want to include the bias term because as we talked previously, uh, this bias term gives us the baseline. So this is how much a car should cost if we don't know anything about this car. So this is the baseline. And in case we don't include the, the bias term, then uh, yeah, we don't know um, like what, uh, what should we base our prediction on. So let's add ones here. So we don't have ones here. And what we need to do is add another column here at the beginning. And um, for that, uh, we need to first, uh, if you remember, there is a, a function called ones, right? And we just need to append this ones into at the beginning of this matrix. So I think uh, it has nine uh, rows. So just to be on the safe side, let's just use this shape of x0, which creates, which looks at the number of rows and creates this uh, vector of ones. And then there is a function in NumPy called uh, column stack, which takes, uh, let's say we can take two vectors and stack them together as columns or yeah, we can just take a matrix and yeah, so it's not here because of this scientific notation. You cannot see this because of the scientific notation, but basically took uh, once, two times, and then added the, uh, the content of the matrix. And the, the result is a two dimensional matrix. So we need just that. I don't know if rounding will help. Yeah, it doesn't help. So maybe I'll do that just to see the results. Uh, okay, well, at least for these ones, we see that uh, because these values are a bit larger, that's why NumPy is trying to be smart. So basically it uh, adds uh, one, uh, one as the first uh, column of this matrix. So this is our X now, we override it. And then we go through this same thing again. And let's call it V full because it contains all the all the weights. Right. So starting from the bias and then the rest, and we can decompose it. We can say that uh, so V zero is uh, the first one, right? So this is the bias, and uh, the the W the rest. For usual W, we take the rest, so one and everything after one. And this is uh, the coefficients that we have for our linear regression. So, yeah, so this is, uh, uh, this is the bias term, and this is W1, W2, and W3. You see that they actually are negative. So we didn't have negative in our example. I think because, uh, so here, maybe if I have larger values here, uh, maybe it won't be negative. But basically, it means that yeah, it's still negative. So negative values here mean that um, instead of adding to the price, so we have some price. So here it's not, uh, I don't know if we can still uh, call price. But basically, so in the example we had previously, we had positive weights, meaning that for extra uh, horsepower that we have in our car, the, cry, the price increases. But here for this particular, let's say if this is, uh, um, I don't know, uh, H of a car, right? For each extra H, uh, for each extra year of a, for a car, the price decreases. So here we have this negative um, number, meaning that the price actually goes down. Okay. Um, and uh, we, I think what we do now, what we need to do, now, something we didn't do is put this in a function. 
So let's just uh, take this one and uh, just put everything that we did here. So first we have once here, then uh, we have our X modified X here. Then uh, we do the normal equation. So we just put them in one line. So this is the normal equation, right? And then at the end, we need to return the results and I'll do this as a tuple. So the first uh, element of the tuple will be the bias term and then uh, the rest is, uh, the, the weights and yeah if we do this once again without the ones so we have the y and here we can quickly test it a train train linear regression yeah, so it gives the same results okay so the adding ones happens inside so we as users we don't need to worry about adding ones to our feature matrix okay so we implemented this function and now let's use this for our problem let's use it for predicting the price of a car <laughs>